Atlantic City, home of beaches and gambling, is the ultimate getaway for Northeast elites looking to party. But one day, an anime convention called Anime Next made its home in Atlantic City. Now Northeast fans come yearly to celebrate the best of Japanese anime and pop culture. This is Anime Next 2019. <laughs> the Saiyans glow, I will always stay gold. This is Nerdcore Absolution. Come to peace with your inner nerd, and after you can stay gold like T.O.M. Chilling out the galaxy, and we know him. Putting tunes up that'll keep you up. Glued to the screen like you do too much. The galaxy is ours, the sun and the stars. Hey there, anime fans. We are here with a wonderful interview with the legendary Sean Penn of anime. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> uh, Richard I haven't Epcar. beaten up anybody yet, so I, I don't know about that. Richard, Richard it's Epcar. Right? Epcar, right, yes. Richard Epcar. Uh -huh. Ghost in a Shell, Lupin the Third, Mortal Kombat, you know, as rated, uh, just so many legendary. Kingdom Hearts is another big one. Yeah, Kingdom Hearts, which. I just started playing Kingdom Hearts yeah, 3. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Yep, jo JoJo's Bizarre I've actually done over 600 characters and uh, in animation games and anime. Now, did you start in 1980 or 1980? Well, it, was in the, it was in the 80s when I really started doing this stuff. I, I came out to uh, California to yeah. be an on-camera actor. Yeah. And I did a lot on-camera. I did a lot of soaps and TV shows and some movies and stuff like that. And then I got into this voice thing and I just... Uh, kind of blew up in the voice thing, so I've been uh, doing that ever since, and uh, for about 35 years now. So, and I still do all the on-camera stuff here and there, but uh, the voice stuff is just like almost every day I'm in the booth doing something. So, well, with the first big one being Robotech. Robotech, yeah, Robotech kind of started the whole ball rolling. And, and more importantly, uh, I think something that not a lot of people know: you're in one of the greatest anime movies of all time, Macross Plus. Yeah. Well, OVA then they did a movie edition, but what's it like to be what would that movie like, working on that movie? With the legendary music and everything that was... Well, let's not forget Brian Cranston is okay. in that movie, too. He was my co-star in that movie, too. <laughs> uh, it, it was really great. That was, uh, you know, it's funny. It was one of those movies I did a long, long time ago, and I never really got a chance to see the movie. And uh, I went to one of these uh, anime conventions, and I, I mentioned that at one of my panels, and somebody gave me a copy of it. And I'm watching it on the plane. I don't know if you've seen the show or not, but... Uh, there's a scene where the giant strips this little girl down and starts licking her like a lollipop. So I'm on the plane and I'm watching this, and people <laughs> next to me are going, well, who is this perv, you know, like, like so. Uh, so yeah, I know, and uh, that was the first time I got to, and I, I watched it like the rest of it. It was a great movie. Oh, it was a really yeah. cool movie, yeah. Um, so, not when I, but you know, it's it not on me. But um, another thing that unfortunately has happened is we recently lost the legendary Monkey Punch. Right. And I, I know for a fact, Lupin is a big part of your career. I mean, you go to these conventions, you do your blooper reel. Where yeah, yeah, yeah. Tons of Lupin stuff. Night, yeah. Uh, so what did Monkey Punch mean to you? Well, you know, it's funny. We, we, my James Bond thing. Mon Monkey Punch apparently was a huge James Bond fan as well. And there's a lot of elements of Bond in Lupin, which I really enjoy. I like a lot. You know, I did uh, the, first, uh, the first Red Jacket series about uh, 12, 15 years ago. And Monkey Punch actually came to the recording, and I got to meet him. And he's, a, you know, he was a very, uh, not very tall guy, and I'm very tall, so I stood up. I think I scared him. And uh, but uh, we got some pictures together, and he was really excited about Lupin being uh, dubbed into English. He was really excited about that, and uh, it was really great to meet him. He he's an amazing guy. He created an incredible show. And I just love it to death. And uh, when I did that first one, I, I was always hoping 
that I'd be able to, to visit those characters again. And then we got uh, this call to do the Blue Jacket series, which was great. It was on Toonami. It was one of the number one shows on Toonami. And then we just did another Blue Jacket series, which was, uh, you know, which was going to be released on the 15th, I believe, on Toonami as well. The, yeah, uh, Lupin we, Part 5. Yeah, next week, I, I, because we were actually just talking about the Toonami panel I did last weekend. Yeah. I'm not, yeah, last night, I mean. It's going to be released next weekend. So. Yeah, yeah. So we're really excited about that. And then... Uh, we've also been working on uh, our company uh, that I have with my wife, Ellen Stern, uh, at Car Entertainment. We've been doing uh, some stuff for discotheque uh, distributors, uh, some Lupin movies, and we'll be doing some more, uh, another series, and some more films. And so there's a lot of, you know, it's funny, be careful what you wish for, because uh, we've got a, a boatload of Lupin stuff coming your way, and uh, we're very excited about that. I personally can't wait. I love Lupin. I was always hoping that somebody would pick up, um, it's like, uh, I was trying to say Bajigan Goman uh, Roman, which was an anime that got released like five years ago where it's like a thief in Edo, Japan. He's like a Robin Hood. Uh -huh. It was created by Monkey Punch. Oh, wow. Very cool. It, it never got picked up, but I was like, oh, I was hoping well, because Monkey Punch stuff it is awesome. But Jigen, speaking of Lupin, Jigen's one of my all time favorite characters. I love doing him. He's just a great, great character. I enjoy him tremendously. And I direct a lot of the shows, so it's, uh, it's just really fun to work on those. I, I I always loved Femme Fatale, so mine was always Fujiko. I, no, I, I, I know it seems obvious. How can you not love Fujiko? But you know, Jessica Rabbit's one of my favorite kids, so I always love Femme Fatale. So I, like, yeah, break the stereotype. She's a bad girl. Oh, yeah. Very bad. We're glad that she's bad. But you know, we were speaking of bloopers, actually. Yeah. And um, do you feel that bloopers help the overall production of a, a show? And if so, how? <laughs> Well, it's funny, when we started, I feel like I kind of started the ball on this whole thing, but uh, when we did, when we were doing a loop on back in the day, we did a bunch of, uh, you know, the, the bloopers, because, you know, you're in the you're in these dark booths for hours and hours at a time with no windows or anything, you get a little stir-crazy. So we started making up these funny lines, and, you know, we were just having fun. And so one day the producers visited me uh, when we were recording, and I said, hey, I want to show you guys this stuff. And I thought they'll either laugh or they'll fire me, you know. So uh, thankfully they laughed. But the, the problem was they liked it so much they wanted me to keep doing it and create, you know, uh, 10 or 20 uh, outtakes for every single episode. And I said, well, is this something you're going to pay me for? And they said, no, we want you to do it. And I said, okay. So I, I talked myself into getting more work, actually, is what I did. But uh, it was a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun doing it. They should pay you. Uh, like, I remember, because I've been going to cons like for over 10 years now, and when I started, I was going to Metrocon when the people at ADV brought out Lake Takahana Gamera, yeah. where they did the whole get everyone like, other than nothing but pizza and beer and like redneck voices. Right. Which, if you ever get to see that, it is the most amazing thing ever. Um, but, uh, so you spoke also of. You know, you had your own voice uh, acting company now. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, what was the transition transition like from just being voice actor to running a company in that context? Uh, it was pretty smooth. I mean, you know, I, I was doing a lot of voice work and I was approached to direct uh, some projects. And and the the I think the first one I did, the first animated project I did was uh, uh, a thing called The Adventures of Captain Schnauzer, which was a Hungarian animated feature. And it was really cute. Nobody wanted to do it because it was long and very talky, and the translation was all about the economic situation of Hungary, which kids would eat up with a spoon, I'm sure. <laughs> but uh, we had to, uh, you know, change it. And uh, they came to me, and I said, uh, you know, let me let me rewrite the whole thing and put some jokes in it, and it did very well. It was from a company called Quintex, which is no longer in business. Unfortunately, and uh, after that, they had another uh, show called Swiss Family Robinson, which I did for the Family Channel. And then after that, I started getting all kinds of live action uh, Academy Award winning films like Cinema Paradiso, Bill Pot, Eat Drink Man Woman, all these movies. So I, we, were, we were doing all kinds of stuff. So we, we almost needed to put together a company to kind of handle all this stuff. So that's what we did. My wife and I put together a car entertainment incorporated. And we do a lot of stuff, and we're, we do games, we do animation, we do anime, we do. Uh, we're starting a whole batch of uh, live action films we're going to be doing. So there's a lot of stuff going on. It's just, it's gotten, as, as I've gone through this this uh, business, I'm, I'm getting busier and busier every year, which is kind of funny. You know, instead of slowing down, it's getting crazy busy every year. It gets more busy, so. 
Well, thank you for spending some time for this. My pleasure. So, uh, everybody thanks, Sean. Uh, I, I was about to call you Sean Penn. <laughs> now I, Sean now Connery I, I would prefer, I think, <laughs> over Sean Penn, but uh, all right, whatever. Well, whatever. Well, you, he had sort of the, the smooth of the face, but uh, <laughs> thank you, Richard, for spending time for this. My Please pleasure. check out all of Richard's stuff. Check out Lupin. Check out... Ghost of the Shell, check out Macross, and uh, stay hundreds, tuned. Hundreds. And please join me on Instagram. I would really appreciate it. And I'll put that the Instagram at the bottom okay. here. So thank you, anime fans, and stay tuned for the next interview. Yes.
are back here at Anime Next with another interview with Ellen Stern, who you've known from Bleach, Lupin the Third, even Robotech is in her repertoire. So thank you for being here at Anime Next. You're so welcome, and it's my pleasure to be here. I'm delighted. And of course, you're the the wife of Richard Epgar, which, you know, if you are at Anime Next and has a guy to <laughs> set all over, but it, you know, it, it's very interesting. Uh, both of you got to work on Lupin the Third, the, the Blue Jacket, the fourth season, which, as we were talking earlier, was number one on Toonami, which mm -hmm. made me so happy as somebody who said, Toonami needs to have this. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, we also recently lost uh, Monkey Punch this past year. I know, I know. I'm so, so sorry. So, what a loss. What did Monkey Punch mean to you? Because uh, I think your main role with Lupin has been the more recent series. Uh, no, actually, I, <clears throat> I did uh, roles throughout Lupin oh, okay. the Third, but uh, this, the Blue Jacket series, I, I did quite a few roles on it, and I was Elena Gotti, I was Nora Anita, I was Mama, I was Josephine, I was, I was a lot of things, <laughs> <laughs> but I also directed, co-directed, Richard and I co-directed the series, <clears throat> and you asked me about Monkey Punch, mm -hmm. uh, Monkey Punch was an artist of immeasurable talent, and <clears throat> While I never had the chance to meet him, I, Richard did meet him once. But uh, I wish I had, but he's left us with a legacy, hasn't he? Yes, yes. I, I got to meet him once to over 10 years ago at, down in Tampa at Metricon, and he's such a nice guy. Like, he's really one of those artists that seemed like he really loves what his work has done to touch. A lot of integrity. A lot of integrity and passion. And within Lupin, I, and I didn't make the mention that you didn't do other roles, but I, I think probably the biggest role you've ever done is Elena, which is such a unique character. How fun was it to play her? I thought Nora and Nita was pretty big also. I mean, as a matter of fact, Nora and Nita was, uh, I think, the role that touched people the most. Oh. Because, do you remember her? Uh, oh. She was the woman who was in love with her husband. Yes. And together till the end. Yeah, together till the end, yes. Uh, that and was people very... wept. Yeah. And they said that that was the most emotional episode of all the loop on the thirds. And uh, so <laughs> that moves me because if you like what I've done, I'm so pleased. Oh, absolutely. That was a tremendous episode. As I'm thinking back to it, I, I'm trying to think back because I actually haven't seen it since it debuted on Toonami. But like I was watching like the subs leading up to it, finally getting the dub and stuff. Uh, but you're absolutely right. That was a very impactful episode. Um, and of course, you've also been acting for a long time. Uh, I started Bible. when I was 12 years old. And do you think that... Starting so young had an impact on how you were able to continue your career going forward? Well, I think <clears throat> your passion is the thing that drives you towards your goals. And my passion drove me. At 12 years old, I fell in love with Shakespeare and, <clears throat> and the Greek tragedies. And I used to have fights with my mother and I'd run into the bathroom, lock it so she couldn't get at me. And I read to the mirror, you know, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou? You know, I was, I was awful, but I was 12 and I was passionate. Yeah. And then I'd read Medea. <clears throat> yeah, I, um, I'd read, Med that was Euripides' play. And, <clears throat> and but, but my love of, the written word, my love of, you know, the best, the very best of the written word is the thing that drove me 
in my writing, in my acting. <clears throat> and as a, voice, as a voice artist, as a voice actress, and as a director, it all informs. And of course, you've also now been able to take that with Richard to do mm -hmm. your own voice acting company. Mm -hmm. with, uh, as, as I was talking with Richard yesterday, you have so many mm -hmm. things lined up. We have a lot, yeah. yeah. What was like the transition like from going just to being a voice actor who's being hired to do voices mm -hmm. to now running a company that's now hiring other mm -hmm. voice actors? Well, I started doing films and television when I was 18. And, <clears throat> And I was always doing a uh, stage also. <clears throat> Excuse me, my allergies. <clears throat> oh, it's um, all right. Anyhow. Uh, we call that the Marco <clears throat> Rubio. <laughs> <laughs> anyhow, I was doing this one film. It was a Western. And we were in Utah, and the casting director asked me if I would like to do some voice work. And I said, sure. And then later I said, well, could I bring my boyfriend along? <clears throat> and he said, yeah, sure. There's roles for men. I did all the women's roles in this one film, which was tremendously fun for me because I got to change up my voice, which has always been very easy for me. <clears throat> and Richard got the male lead. <clears throat> so um, that was the beginning. So I brought Richard into voice work. Mm -hmm. And then it just evolved. And we kept doing project after project. And I said, we need to form our own company. Because we were acting, we were directing, we were writing. <clears throat> and we were working for other people. <clears throat> so I said, we have to form our own company and do our own projects. <clears throat> that was a driving force for me. So that's how that evolved. Now, another thing that Richard is known for is the bloopers. I, I was joking with him yesterday. It's like, it's sort of a <clears throat> business thing that he does in a way. Like every time I go to a con, his panel is always on bloopers. Uh, do you feel that bloopers, um, at least I feel that bloopers can help cause a cast mm -hmm. to grow because it lets their hair down and, and can like, oh, we all make mistakes and it can bring them together. Mm -hmm. What are your feelings generally on your bloopers? Well, they're intentional. <laughs> they're not mistakes. <laughs> um, we do it because we know that it, it breaks up the levity. You know, it gives some levity to the session. <clears throat> I mean, you're in the booth, you're working by yourself, and if something occurs to you, you just throw it out. And, you know, we all get a laugh. So they're not mistakes, they're intentional. Except if you forget what you're doing, then you go, oh, don't blah, 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 blah. And um, <clears throat> then, then that's, that's, you know, of course, a mistake, but if you if you if you if you don't if you don't hit the sink, if you don't hit the word, mm -hmm. but uh, generally they're intentional. What is your favorite type of word that you like to see? Mm. Um, my own. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it is, there like I get I get I get a uh, it's. It's fun. I'm, I'm not as attached to the bloopers. I've seen them a million times. I'm throughout all the bloopers. Mm -hmm. But I love the work, you know, and they're funny. But once you've laughed a few times, then, you know, the work is, is very significant. <clears throat> like with Loop on the Third. Yeah. We did not have a chance to do that many bloopers. <clears throat> We didn't have time. I'll tell you the story of Lupin the yeah. Third. We got the project. We were asked to do it. And of course, it had been 12 years since we had done the last mm -hmm. one. <clears throat> and so we said, yes, we want to do it. 
we had three and a half weeks to do 26 episodes. Richard was in one studio directing. I was in the other studio directing. We worked from 9 in the morning till 11 at night, every single day, no days off. And that's how we did three and a half weeks. <laughs> but that, that was the deadline. But here's the funny thing. It was a year and a half later till it came on. Uh, they, you know, that, that's always a difficult part, isn't it? It's like, you really have all this time, but they, they wanted a deadline for whatever reason. We want it yesterday, and we'll think about when we're going to put it on. That, that production was, I've heard a lot of those, I, I just recently graduated uh, from TCMJ with a degree in communication, television, and movies. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, and we heard so many of those type of stories from like people who are doing production assistance and producing, you know, came in to speak to us. There's so many stories like that, like they have this deadline, but it doesn't get shown for like five years later or something like that, so. Well, but when you're dealing with major people, yeah. it's, you, you expect more, yeah. you know. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. But we didn't get a chance to QC it, which is to look at it at the very end and make sure that everything was in. But we, we were very, very uh, definitive about our work. We had to, all we had was a translation. So basically Richard and I had to rewrite every line by, he was in one studio writing, I was in another studio writing. I put together this, uh, uh, this, this, uh, well, we had the list of the characters, and so we yellowed them out, highlighted them on the computer, so we'd know who was doing what role, because there were a million roles <laughs> that had to be covered, and basically, one actor goes into the studio at a time, and they, they're there for two hours or four hours, so I'd call him. What, what did you write for this line? Because that would influence what I was going to write, you know, if something was changed. Well, it's like, it's like acting, you know, what the person says can influence... It's exactly what like you're that. Say. Yeah. But, unlike in acting where you're, you're doing it together, mm -hmm. We were in two step, separate studios, and we didn't know the storyline. We were finding out the storyline while we were working. <clears throat> but we were so delighted when Toonami found made it number one. It, I think it, it's one of those perfect shows. I do a panel on Toonami, <laughs> and I talk about Toonami's always strongest when it has variety. And Loop on Third is the perfect uh, sort of variety to differentiate from the constant shonen mm -hmm. big blockbuster action adventures. And right. Much. So it was so refreshing to see Loop on Third and to see all my favorite characters. Because I started, not that I started watching when it initially came on, but like when Toonami, or should say Adult Swim, did the initial run of the second season of Loop on the Third, the red mm -hmm. shirt. So I started there and just getting to see all the movies and just to see those characters back in the modern age. It was so, so Oh, cool. yeah, and it was delicious for us to dive into it. Now, <clears throat> we had one change. Dan Lorger, Dan Lorger was doing... Thank you. Uh, uh, Zangetsu? Yeah. And <clears throat> he did it for all those years. And... We didn't have him because he moved away. Mm. So I said Doug Earholtz was the perfect person. <clears throat> and I had not I had not worked with the show before, yeah. you know, outside of going in to do my voice work. So Dan knocked it out of the park. <clears throat> and what I wanted with the character was to have 
him being very, very officious and then very baby-like. And so that differential came across, which I was, I was so pleased about. Well, thank you so much for Loop on the Third, the fourth season. And did you get to work at all on the fifth season? <clears throat> Yes, um, I, I'm doing a, a major character in it. Well, we'll be seeing that, I believe it debuts next week on Toonami. So, yes. So, Toonami fans, keep an eye for that. Elena, thank you so thank much. Thank you, thank you, my pleasure. And I hope you <clears throat> more success. <laughs> We're on a, <clears throat> I think we both have allergies. <laughs> you, it's terrible. <clears throat> I just want to say, Follow me, please, on Instagram. I, I'm i producing uh, a sitcom that Richard and I, Stephen Tobolowsky and Reeve Carney are starring in. It's very, very funny, so please stay tuned. I wrote the script, I created it, and um, so please follow us. Thank you. And thank you to Anime fans, and stay tuned for more from Anime Next 2019.